Data okay. Okay, guys, so how are you? And uh, how are you guys? And I have uh, got my other glasses here too. So I hope we've got a decent connection. It just seems like it's going in and out of connection here. So I do apologize about that anyway. So hi everyone. And um, yeah, I hope we've got a decent connection. It's not that great, is it? But it, it will have to do. So hi, uh, just waiting for uh, your chat to come up. Um, I just start off here with um, with whereabouts are you from, and uh, yeah, connection problems. It's just a nightmare, isn't it? So again, I shall have to cut this first bit off. Okay, I hope the connection's okay where you are. Hi, everyone. Hello there, and I can see I can see your uh, chat there now. That's that's great. Uh, so hi everyone, and today it seems to have turned back into winter here in the UK, and um, it's cloudy, it's chilly, and um, not good at all. Uh, so um, got grey skies. So what is it? What what's it like uh, where you are, and whereabouts are you? Uh, in the world watching today hi everyone and lovely to see you thank you for your lovely little flowers there okay um so let me just have a look um put my glasses on i like these ones better um hello hello from the usa um oh yeah, we'll, we'll continue about the royal family shortly. I just have to. This is a chat show. So, um, hello, uh, Marie. Um, you, UK press this morning, Meghan and Harry not let, letting staff use car park. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah, there's, there's quite a few things that are going on at the moment. In London and cloudy and cold. Yes, it is cold in London. Um and it was, well, actually, it was quite sunny yesterday. So uh, good morning, everyone. I don't know what the time is where you are, but it is the afternoon in the UK. But um, I try to, because uh, the majority of you guys are from um, America, Canada, Australia. So I'm kind of calling it the morning show, hoping that I'm going to, uh, you know, catch you guys. Okay, you're, Al Alethea, you're in Australia and we had rain today. And it feels like London, yeah, yeah. Is that why, Alethea, is that where you are originally from, uh, England? And you moved over to Australia? That's a big move, isn't it? Uh, hello there from California. Hi, hi, uh, Shanna Lee. Hi, Harps and Hens, lovely to see you. And Debbie, uh, I'm doing the uh, horse race again. <laughs> so Debbie uh, Deguire, MK, uh, good morning. Mosaic girl, uh, hello there. And it's sunny. Uh, it's midnight in Australia. Okay, well, catching you there. So uh, hello, Michelle from the USA. Thank you for your love arts. And um, Penny, thank you. And oh, Moonshadow, hello there. It's cold there in St. Louis, Missouri. Is that right? Uh, Dawn, hello, Dawn. Uh, uh, much love from South Yorkshire. Hello there, Dawn. And uh, hello, Jamie, and uh, from, from Louisiana. And oh my goodness, uh, from Toronto. So we've got Canada, America, Australia, anywhere else here. Spain, okay, the UK. Nina from Spain. Hola. And uh, spring flowers, hi there. Thank you, spring flowers, for those lovely smileys and those love hearts. And oh, it's lovely. Hello there from New York, Chris. How are you? And Stephanie there from Tampa, Florida. Wow. And uh, Moon Shadow, hello. Thank you, Frogmore. Yes. Um, so thank you all for being here, my lovely, lovely followers. And you know, I just. Um, I just love coming on here to see you guys. Hello, Penny. 
Hello, Nina. Everybody, hello. And so uh, it's great to see you. Oh, Cecilia from Cape Town, South Africa. Not, not forgetting you, Cecilia, with all your comments that you make on my show. Aurora, um, hello there from North Florida. Hello, everyone. And wow, that's just so exciting. Do you know, it just excites me because you're all from different parts of the world uh, coming here to this point here with all our lovely community. OK, and it's just so lovely. Um, uh, these are not, not new. Uh, these, these are not new glasses. They're quite old. Um, I, I did buy some. Actually, I bought these, but I think that that the, I don't like them, but I can't actually can't see see out. I can see out them, but what do those look like? Those glasses, because I can actually see your chat there. Yeah, I can see your chat there. Actually, I might wear these ones. Yeah, it is a it is an eclectic mix of people, which is great, isn't it? Oh, I have. I've got my cup of tea as well. So uh, let's not forget that I've got my cup of tea. Um, I keep trying to I keep trying to start this diet too, which is the nightmare. <laughs> um, I don't know. I, I don't know whether it's the weather. I just need to get to. I, I need to get to a decent gym. So I don't know whether these glasses are better than the other ones. So uh, yes, you've got your Irish breakfast tea. I've got. Um, I've got. It's from Harrogate. My tea. I, I drink it quite strong though. Yes, I like my uh, tea. Hello there, everyone. Do these glasses look any better? They're a bit see-through, aren't they? A bit naked looking. So I hope so. I'll, 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 you prefer the others? Okay, let's let's stick. To, let's put the others on then. Um, yeah, they do. They look a bit masculine then. Don't I? Don't like them. Yeah, let, let's stick with those. Yeah. Hello, Nina. Oh, thank you for your donation. Look how sweet you are. You're so lovely. Um, thank you for your compassionate insights on narcissism. Yeah, you know, I, I'm so passionate about narcissism. I, I don't want to bang about it now because I know some of you get bored with that. But uh, it, is, it, is a, it is, to me, it's a very serious subject because narcissism, I, and I won't go on about it because I can get a bit carried away with it. it you, you can get narcissism, well, in the royal family, for one. Um, you can get narcissism in the workplace. You can get narcissism in your in-laws. You can get narcissism in your own family. And uh, when you kind of enlighten yourself, uh, with uh, with that um, knowledge, you kind of it kind of helps to heal you because um, and and you're less of a target. And it's really unfortunate that we have to experience somebody like this who feels that they they are way above us in intelligence when they're not really. They've got a lot of kind of gaps in their emotional intelligence and. And they do it to uh, to actually conquer and win and all of this kind of competing. Uh, but the thing is, is that empaths are not very kind of, although not very competitive, we're passionate to do things in life. Uh, we're very passionate about, well, I am, I'm very passionate about things, uh, anything like a countryside. I can, I can look at a tree and I can be passionate about, you know, how many years that's taken to grow that tall and all sorts of different things. But that's what empaths have got that narcissists don't possess is a passion, a love for kind of life. And that's a big like, um, got traffic outside. Okay, so that, that's a big kind of uh, plus sign for empaths actually. Okay, so I am not going to talk about, because I, I'm not going to talk about here, about the surrogate, okay. And I know you're thinking, why not, why not, okay. Um, well, I've, I've had lots of narcissists around me, spring flowers, but I can't mention it on here. Um, so I have to say, um, 
I'm not talking about the... Um, I've actually recovered, sorry, I'll go on to what you're saying, Jane. I, actually, I still had it yesterday and I struggled with that late show uh, yesterday. I think some of you noticed that I looked a bit drained. Uh, I've just come out of that uh, migraine today and it's just, um, <laughs> yeah, this car, you know what, this is a really quiet, quiet, quiet road out here. Um, uh, and, and there's no traffic normally, and it's just so quiet, suburb. So I don't know why, you know, got honking horns outside. Um, I, I don't want to talk about, yeah, it's a very touchy subject. The reason why, I don't want to talk about it, guys, and I'll take my glass off, um, is because I've actually compiled a video, okay, and... Um, I have been, and I'm going to put it up on YouTube, okay, and I have been quite frank with it, um, of, of, the, of the surrogate, and I, I know some of them are on cut, the ones that I've done, handing over the baby and the uh, big huge baby um, to uh, the, um, also the complications that may occur where there has to be a hospital nearby so all of that okay um i've done uncut but this one i am actually going to put up on youtube after i've already compiled it this morning and after this we've finished here so you can go and have a look at that so i'm not going to talk about the surrogate uh now so uh that comes afterwards okay that's something you can look at yes so i've already done that so go and have a look at that afterwards so um yeah narcissism well this is a chat show so it's about anything really i want to go on to some topic here today and i will do in a minute because uh, i don't know what your thoughts is going to be on this i'm sure i kind of know what your thoughts is going to be um but i'll just uh penny lane any narc i have ever known works uh, works their butts off busy trying to impress normally they are big bosses ruthless in the end only there seems to be no end yeah that's right they're in a cycle aren't they and if you know if you get a you know if you get a sudden change in a narcissist uh, they suddenly become very they do, just want to do everything for you and they want to um impress you you think to yourself why are they doing that <laughs> um and i remember saying to my narc uh, in the, I just used to say what I thought in the end because I thought, well, you, you know, I've, I know what you are and your mask has come off now. So, and I used to say, how, how long is this going to last for a week? Um, what have you done wrong this time? You know, what are you making up for? And, um, and um, you know, because it, it, it was fake. Whenever somebody, whenever a narcissist is like putting themselves out, doing the cooking, doing the washing up, doing whatever, um, putting themselves out for you, uh, to give to you, there's always something um, that they, they want to try to, you to forget or try not to, or, or they feel ashamed about something um that they're trying to cover up or you know and and it's kind of your kind of trust goes out of the window you know you kind of think well and you know if you've got a narcissistic parent and this and if you've got a narcissistic parent you will know this that um you, you know narcissistic parents like to keep you down as well and they will tell you that you're putting weight on uh, even if you've been on a big diet, it's like, oh, you're putting weight on. And and it's always just to keep that edge, you know, keep that edge. And, you know, I, it just, just kind of bounces off me now. <laughs> but um, in, in, a, in, a, in if it was a strange, if they said that to a stranger, that would be very insulting. You know, it would be very insulting. They wouldn't be friends with them for long. But because it's family, you kind of put up with it, you know. And you can say, well, you do banter like that as children, as, as siblings, as uh, father and daughter. But do you? I don't say that to my daughter. 
I don't say that to my daughter. I don't say that at all. Um, so, you know, and, and if you've got a really full-blown narcissist in your family, they will get pissy with you for no reason. And, you know, this escalates into a, a big drama. And then it's raging at you, which is teeth shattering. And I must say that it's teeth shattering and it's like it really blows your head off. And then you leave really upset thinking, what the hell did happen there? What happened there? And it's just somebody possibly um, said something to them that kind of, um, you know, give had that narcissistic injury and they just wanted to... Uh, rage at somebody and pass you know it's like deflecting that onto somebody else and it's just horrible um, I've been through it and it's a cycle and you you kind of learn just to be in the presence for about an hour or two and then leave um, I think that is the way to manage it if if you have to be around uh, somebody who's got a narcissistic uh, uh, personality disorder where they are in this cycle of rage and it's calming down you know oh I'm so glad I've got that off my shoulders and then it's into oh I only got I've lost my rag but I don't care if you lost your rag you don't lose your rag at me for no reason that kind of thing so it's like it goes into the calming phase and then it's like the love bombing phase which is making it up to you for the last time they blew your head off and then it goes into the pissy stage where they're getting pissed off again and then it goes right back to the rage again and and you can guarantee it's like clockwork and if you catch them in the calming stage you're okay maybe for a week until it reaches it depends how bad they are until it reaches the pissy stage and you need to get out of that okay let, let's let's just continue okay Okay, yeah, this um, this surrogate, I've, I've actually done a, a video of that after I finish this, I'm going to put on, I'm going to upload that tomorrow, uh, not tomorrow, after this video, so, um, yeah, they are like Jekyll and Hyde, um, it's, you know, it's sweet and nicey at one minute, and then it's like raging the next, it's, um, uh, it's craziness it is it's it is it's pure crazy it's crazy anybody who's like that are just crazy they're off their rocker basically um you cannot live with a narcissist if you do live with a narcissist you need to have a break um they you know you end up blaming yourself for everything too which is not healthy um oh why did i get involved with that person why did this why why have I put myself in this situation? You tend to blame yourself and it's not your fault. You know, um, it's not your fault. You just happened to meet somebody who looked normal, you know, who looked normal. Um, it's no good with somebody who's got anxiety because, you know, if you've got anxiety and you're with a narcissist, there's no way that that narcissist is going to help to soothe you, help to support you. Um, so that anxiety would just get worse and worse, you know. I think if you're like that, you need somebody very understanding and, uh, you know, who's going to understand and not blame you for everything. Um, hello, Spring Flowers. My sister would really trash me behind my back. Yeah, you get that a lot in families, um, to my family. And then smile at my face. I had to cut contact with her because she was uh, causing me so much emotional pain. Yeah, um, sibling rivalry and you think that your, your, your sisters and your brothers love you unconditionally until you find out that, that this is what they do. Um, again, it stems from uh, childhood um you know, childhood jealousies and envies that people do not kind of grow out of, and and when the, when you've got a sister who is is very jealous of of you for no reason because you're thinking, well, I've got the same as you, 
Um, in fact, you've probably got a bigger house than me. And, um, you know, you've got a bigger house than me and you're still jealous. I don't get that. So it's, it is very difficult. Yes. Yeah, so, um, yep. Yeah, so the uh, Oprah Winfrey situation. I am going to do a reading on that, guys. Okay. But we will talk about that now if you want to. I mean, what's your take on uh, Harry um, joining this Oprah Winfrey show thing, um, series or whatever it is? I've not really looked it up. But um, hi, Jamie. Uh, had a narcissistic boyfriend. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of them out there. Very charismatic and charming, but would have... Uh, fits every now and then like a child yeah could be set off uh, for trivial reasons felt like walking on eggshells all the time yeah and, and when you pull them up for that you get abuse even more yeah you do uh, my sister and brother brother all moved out of home very young to get away my poor brother committed suicide oh, i'm really sorry we family rift for 13 years you see, this is what can happen when you have family rifts. Um, it's it's crazy. Um, it is a form of bullying in a way. Oprah is sold out. In what way is she sold out, Andy? Andy Pandy. Um, yeah, what she sold out, she makes lots of money anyway, isn't she? Uh, Nina, um, Yvonne, uh, this is the uh, philanthropy endeavour, but with an angle that doesn't make it look like they are disobeying the Queen's no. Really. Mm. Well, I've got to do a reading on that because intuitively... I pick things up, but I'm not going to mention it here. I pick things up about this. Um, I, I just feel it's like, to me, it's like they will do it. And I pick this up about Megan. They will do it uh, anyway. They will they will do this anyway, uh, whether the Queen likes it or not. And and I, I I'm going to do an intuitive reading on where that will actually, you know, how that will transpire, okay. Um, yeah, there, there is, uh, there is, the, do you know, oh, the, the, anybody that's around the royal family will actually be investigated. And that's, that's the problem. Um, yeah, I, I think I've had family, I've had partners, I've had, um, but then I'm, again, I'm an empath and um, I, I'm softly spoken and I, I get targeted for that. Um, but um, until they see my rife that I don't put up with it, I don't put up with BS. And then they either go or they try to change. Okay. Yeah, ch teeth chattering. Uh, raging, it puts the fear of God in you, it really does. Um, and you you wonder, you know, when you're a child and somebody rages at you like that, like your uncle raged at you, when you're a child, that can really damage you psychologically to have no confidence, to not be able to speak to an adult. You know, uh, you grow up thinking, I don't speak to that adult because they're going to rage at me. So, um, did anybody have that feeling as a child that you don't talk to an adult because they're going to rage at you? Um, well, I feel that I, I had that problem. And you should really bring your children up to, to be able to talk to adults with, without being frightened of them, you know. Um, hello, Brenda. Hollywood is scandalous. Oh, okay. Uh, Hollywood is scandalous. It is, and um, there's too much politics in Hollywood uh, as well. And I feel, I do feel this is what the royal family are a bit kind of wary that um, 
that there is this kind of uh, power behind Megan. Do you know? Do you know what I'm saying? Um, okay. Uh, yeah. Um, I I just feel that we've got this Oprah Winfrey thing going on. And then we've we've recently had Meghan being shut down, haven't we, from um, the royal family and to be put in the shadows. Um, uh, to to allow William and Kate to 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 be in the front. So that's been going on, and I feel this is I, I'm, I'm waiting for the backlash of that actually, and um, there's been a backlash which is the. Um, Instagram account which they've allowed that little bit of independence but this other one is is trying to like somebody said just there um, they're trying to go with it so they can bend the rules to actually to do this with Oprah Winfrey um, so anyway I will do a reading on that um, Yeah, I'm going to do about uh, the, so, thank you, Sylvia. I'm going to do, a, uh, I've got a full video of that, which I'm putting up on YouTube about the surrogate. Okay, I know you can't wait to talk about that, I know. Uh, but uh, I, I've actually got that there to, for you to look at. Okay, and we'll take it from there. Because as things have transpired, I don't know if you've noticed, but... As things have transpired, my intuition has uh, come to light. Um, so, uh, yeah, the Instagram account of Photoshop photos, okay. Really? Okay, so what I wanted to look at, guys, which is a little bit of a twist here to this live show. Okay, not going to talk about uh, Megan. Okay, it's a different thing. And, and tell me what you think about this, because the first thing that I, my intuition really sprung up with this. And you know about, we, we've had this scandal, haven't we, about Kate, um, uh, about uh, Kate, the Middletons, uh, Kate's family have been, um, something's been leaked out about Kate, the Middletons, that they're going bankrupt. They've got no money, they're broke. And then we have this leak about William and this uh, Rose Rose uh, having an affair, which I did I did a video on that, uh, which I said it was an emotional uh, connection, but that was it. Um, so I've got I have got that there. If you want to look at that, and also, um, so it seems to me I don't know how you feel about this. It seems to me as if the the attention is trying to be trying to be taken off uh, Meghan and Harry while they do this kind of um, this procedure of this baby, you know, this handing over of this baby, which I picked up from Frimley Park, do you remember, to Frogmore, which I, I, I predicted that a long time ago, that they were going to come in and blackened out four by fours. Um, from Frimley Park uh, to with the men in grey um, to uh, Frogmore, and and that was uh, going to happen. Okay, around I got the twenty third of April. So um, okay, so we, we're getting all this because the baby's imminent. We're getting all this like deflecting. Oh, let's you know, let somebody else have the scandal for a change rather than uh, Meghan and Harry. So I feel this is very st staged. Now we've got this other thing here, which is really, um, it seems like somebody's got their flying monkeys hat out here, guys, because not only is it um, Prince William and not only is it, um, you know, Kate that's getting all this garb, but I've got here Princess Eugenie has been targeted by Instagram trolls, okay, which um, Meghan and Harry have just got this uh, Instagram account, haven't they? Then all of a sudden, uh, Princess Eugenie gets these Instagram trolls after embarrassing uh, error reflects on her badly. So 
I, I feel I just get the impression that that there's, there is some deflection here. Um, Princess Eugenie was cruelly mocked by Instagram trolls after making a basic error in one of her posts. Um, and this is by, this is the Daily Mail, okay. Um, the 29 year old posted two photos of her older sister, uh, Princess Beatrice, to mock National Sibling Day. Uh, one of the pictures showed the two princesses together at Eugenie's wedding in October last year. The second depicts Eugenie and Beatrice lying outside together with head, heads almost touching. Beatrice accompanies the photo with the caption, to my big sister, you're, you're the best, especially when helping me and my dress into into the getaway getaway car <laughs> getaway car however other social media users uh were swift to point out the uh, grammatical error oh my goodness do you know what i do spelling all the time wrong i'm being made and beatrice should have written you're not your okay you're not your whatever um and that was just for spelling mistakes. She got a lot of trolls. Okay. Now, I, I just feel, you know, if that was that was like a very kind of light-hearted joke there, but if she's getting trolls for no reason other than just a spelling mistake, um, yeah, so... You know what what uh what is going on guys you know and i also get that um princess eugenie happy national siblings day uh to my big sister oh that's really sweet your best especially when helping me and my just getaway car <laughs> oh bless that's really sweet so um yeah, so I don't know what you think. Maybe that was a little bit harmless, but why have a load of trolls when, you know, you... Um, okay. W one moment, please. Uh, okay. Um, so... Okay, so... Let's continue. Uh, so, um, and also there is uh, there is another woman here apart from this rose. There is another woman uh, around William, but I don't. I don't. There's there's a couple of blonde women, and I always thought that um, that he actually liked his blonde women. Um, let me just have a look here. Um, Hi everyone, and um, yeah, I, d I don't get why uh, why Eugenie would get trolls just for spelling mistake. Um, and um, at that point, I feel that that Meghan and Harry had, had, had started up this uh, Instagram account. Okay, I don't feel that's fair um, at all. Okay, at all. Yeah, yeah, she, she, it was for some kind of, okay, can you see that on your screen? That thing there? Oh gosh, don't know what that was. Okay, um, so it just seems, it, I, I just hope that there, there aren't like paid trolls out there that, uh, are kind of trashing other tra other royal, royal members of the family. That would be so wrong, um, really. Um, so, so let's have a look here because this is a chat show. I'm just going to pick up things randomly because I've I've kind of changed the format a little bit and I've gone back to to the way um, the way I was doing before and uh, just like a chat show. Um, and doing the royal reading separately, but um, 
Yeah, there is. Th let me have a look at this one here and see what you think here. I see what we can pick up in between the lines too here. So just waiting for it to come up. I hope, I hope you're all, all, all okay, guys. I've got my coffee or uh, tea here. My computer is uh, not responding. <laughs> if it's not responding, I will. I will just uh, yeah. Okay, uh, I've got this. That's uh, it's also that's new. Um, uh, royal Royal Reveal Royal Reveal um, X X Aid gives shocking insight into royalty. If shocking insight into it, it looks like they really worked them hard uh, because I got here any longer and I'd have been burnt out. Okay, a dramatic glimpse into the royal family has been offered from a for, former aide, Nikki Arbiter, uh, which could also help explain why Meghan Markle and Prince Harry have lost so many staff, uh, possibly run them ragged. Dicky Arbiter, who worked with the, the Queen for 12 years, spent five years largely assisting Prince Charles and Princess Diana. According to Global News, he warned Royal AIDS risk uh, suffering from burnout. Uh, since last, well, it must be long hours then. It must be like from four o'clock in the morning till really late at night. Um, since last November, three of Meghan and Harry's closest aides have left. Yeah, I think she gets up really early, doesn't she? Does she get up really early? Um, Mr. Arbiter said, I, I was uh, one of the Queen's press secretaries with the remit. In addition to answering her, 90% of the time was spent looking after the Prince of Wales and Princess Diana. I've been on the job with them for five years. Any longer, I would have been burnt out. Well, it must have been. It must be so stressful to actually work uh, as as a, as a, as a personal assistant, um, because um, I, I not none of them stay very long. I've got Melissa who stayed only for six months. Uh, S Samantha, she resigned from her position. Amy Pickerel, she's resigned. Um, so they don't stay very long, do they? Um, yeah. So that was uh, some rev a revelation there that uh, one of them said, like, uh, gosh, you know, if I'd have stayed there, um, uh, if I'd have stayed there, I, I would have been burnt out to a frazzle. Um, um, overworked, I guess. Um, can't see them getting good pay either. I don't feel they would pay a lot to, I think it's like, it'd be like more like a privilege to work for the royal family and get that on your CV, I think. Um, Okay, so, yeah, so I'm just looking here. Um, yeah, and, and this goes on to say, you know, uh, Meghan Markle reportedly text a list of instructions to royal staff as early as 5.30 in the morning, uh, the, one of these royal e experts. Um, so it was really... Um, yeah, it's kind of explaining here what, what that was about. Uh, Megan gets up at five o'clock in the morning often. She gets on the treadmill, treadmill or whatever and starts texting her team members about things that day. Probably in her mind, she's just getting her day set up. Uh, but royal staff members were certainly not expecting or happy to start getting a barrage of text messages, instructions at 5.30 in the morning and took great umbrage and offence at that. Not surprised. Well, it must be one of the reasons why they walked out then because, you know, of getting having to get up so early. Um, and that's no joke, is it? Um, 
Yeah, I'm, I mean, to be honest with you, you, you cannot burn the candle at both ends at all okay. Um, kind of damages your health in, in the long run. Um, I, I, I don't know if I told you that I, I did look after someone, a ballerina once, um, and uh, I went out to Germany with her. And she was like that. She was a bit of a diva. And she would, she would actually, she'd be up all night and all day. Um, and I don't feel that she ever slept. Um, and I said, like, oh, when, when, you know, when, when would you like me to go to bed? And that kind of thing. And she said, when I go to bed. <laughs> and I remember, um, it was it was a private hospital actually and and these these nurses i went to one day i went to bed it was like two or three o'clock in the morning and and she said no you may go to bed now you know and i went to bed it was a private nursing thing and um and and i def the the nurses ring me up saying where are you at six o'clock in the morning you know your 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 client needs dressing and washing and um, and so I'd only get like three hours sleep. So I was doing nearly, I was doing sort of, I had to ring uh, my agency that, <laughs> that put me on that assignment to say, do you realize that I am doing a, a 20 hour shift here without much of a break? And they said, oh, we didn't realize that. We thought that you, you know, that she would, no, she doesn't sleep. I work 20, I'm full, full on for like 20 hours per day. Um, and and she won't let me have a, a break or anything. So, um, you know, I, I kind of got out of that pretty. And, um, you know, it, was, it wasn't nice to, I think another kind of one of those diva types that just wants your attention it was more about attention that she needed she needs it's like that attention deficit kind of attention problem people have they get anxiety if you you don't give them attention and she was like that too and i think the doctor said well she does have a mental health issues and i said well i i know that well i said no i didn't know that i didn't know that she's got mental health issues and i'd have to be looking after her 20 hours you know full on um so it's, it's, to me, it is a bit like that. And it does weigh you down after about a week of that. It actually wears you down. And I, I yeah, it was. And I thought it was really <laughs> exciting because I thought, you know, I'd, I'm going to Germany and it was this really plush kind of hospital, um, natural kind of remedies. And um and it, it was, and she was very demanding, demanding all the time. And I, and she got this uh, mental health issue where she needed uh, constant, constant attention. Um, and I could imagine uh, Megan being like that, not sleeping, uh, just maybe going to bed at like um, maybe one or two in the morning and getting up at five, that kind of thing, not sleeping. Um, um, and um, you know, and having that kind of issue going on, and needing the attention constantly. Um, so I, you know, needing that attention from from a staff, from you know, you need to be here, you need to be doing this, you need to be doing that, and disturbing their life really disturbing their lifestyle isn't it because they they will not have time to do anything else like have a relationship or have any um private time personal time they would have to sacrifice all of that just in case they get a bleep call from megan you know um and, and all of this so i could imagine that they probably get some time off uh like um I don't know, like like from six o'clock till ten or something, or till midnight, and then after that they're on call or something. Uh, I can imagine Megan just calling them up anyway when when they're that you know on their time time off. Um, so yeah, I I've done that kind of work. 
with a high profile person and I don't think I would do it again. I think it sounds exciting at the time, but when you get into that situation and you know, this, this was like very kind of uh, attention all the time, constantly attention. And it was food as well, lots of different kinds of food. Um, I'd have to get her or get it from somewhere. And, um, uh, and, and, you know, I'd have to do that. And oh, it was just, it was, it was very kind of challenging. Um, yeah, um, I don't think she would actually respect their downtime. I don't feel people do like that. Uh, you know, it's like you've, you've got a privilege. You've got that position to look after me. You're here to serve me, that kind of. That's how they, they are. Um, especially that ballerina was like that. She was, the, you're here to serve me. You know, don't think about your, uh, you're thinking about your own needs all the time. And she was like this constantly. I was thinking, well, if, if you, if you stop talking to me like that and just let me have uh, a couple of hours, just some downtime, instead of just giving me this barrage of uh, abuse, then I, I may actually get a rest or something. So it was pretty much like that. Um, but I couldn't say that. You're not allowed to say things like that, you know. Uh, but, you know, they know that they've got good staff. <laughs> But nobody stick, nobody puts up with that kind of clients. Nobody. They, they, they get through, they will get through a, a list of staff, you know, and clients, um, one after the other. Um, it, no, nobody would uh, make them satisfied. They could have the best nurse, the best uh, nanny, the best... What, uh, what you could what you can buy but they'd still not be good enough you know that kind of thing um the best doctors you know and uh, um i think as well she went through a lot of doctors nurses uh big reams of them you know so um yeah so anyway um without i've mentioned no names though so that was uh, just something that i went through um well, it was like a, an agency and, and you did like private work, which I thought was quite good. I've, I've done a, a number of private assignments like that. I went over to Guernsey as well. They paid for my flight. But the only thing that you have to be worried about is actually being quite vulnerable once you get that. That's right. Um, once you get there, you're vulnerable. Uh, you've, you know, you've taken a trip to wherever to escort these people around, but you are vulnerable. So if they're crazy and they <laughs> they start saying crazy things to you, um, there's not an awful lot you can do. Um, so um, you can't walk away so they can say what the hell they like to you because you're in their kind of space. Um, Okay, so hello everyone. Thank you for your comments. Look at all those comments there. Uh, let's have a look. Let's go through some of these comments. Uh, think, thinking about the next disturbing step, every day something new and having a good laugh, I know. Uh, just my opinion, the cleaners are just as important to the CEO, all workers have a role. Exactly. You know, I'm like that. I, I treat everybody equally. And uh, Spring Flowers, uh, Susan Barber, two crazy American women, do not represent the whole culture. Stop spreading negativity. It reflects badly on you. You represent yourself uh, badly, but I don't judge all UK women by you. Sorry, who's that? Me? Um, I don't get that. <laughs> oh, you're talking to Susan Barber. Sorry. Um, okay, I thought you were referring to me. I don't think I've even mentioned that. Okay, a moon shadow. William and Harry have always used the same Wales as, as the last name. That's what I uh, said. Okay. Uh, just block Susan Barber. Okay, why? Why is that? Um, Really? I don't see a Susan Barber on here. Where's Susan Barber? Do you know, I didn't notice that that was going on, guys. Sorry. 
I don't see a Susan Barber. I don't, okay, well, I don't see this. If I, if I see it again, I'll have a look. Sorry about that. Um, okay, uh, now, now, Noel, Noel, hi, Yvonne. Um, I think that as Megan was not really pregnant, she's on drink and drugs, crack, cracking her whip. Uh, that's why staff left addicts function on hardly and they do actually they do people who uh, are on drugs kind of, kind of have a boss don't they 24 7 um and you know they don't sleep they have this hyperactivity going on and also some mental health conditions can have this mania that they that keeps them awake all night um has anyone seen the pregnant woman outside the chapel of the building at Commonwealth? I've actually done a reading about that, Brenda. After I've done this, I I have done a reading on that. So look out for that, okay. Um, I've got to upload that uh, next. So um, Beverly, uh, please kindly watch my video on Prince Harry uh, cloning conspiracy. Okay, I have written on my comments and development history. My mum, the queen, the queen has also. Okay, thank you, thank you, Beverly. We we shall have a look at that too. So, um, yeah, if anybody's interested in the surrogate and that lady that stood out, stood outside at the chapel, I have done a reading. Okay, and uh, this is not an uncut reading either, which I'm I'm being a little bit more kind of open with some of my readings and that's got, I'm going to upload that onto YouTube, probably get taken down, <laughs> but I'm going to upload that onto YouTube uh, after I've finished here. So if it gets taken down, I have had two taken down for no particular reason. Um, but if, if this one gets taken down, um, I will, I will put it up for, for uncut reading. Okay. Uh, uh, private reading. So some, some things, as you know, some things I don't like to to say on YouTube because I find if, I, if I'm not careful, I'll probably get my uh, channel shut down. So I have to be careful. But they are available, uh, you know, videos that I, I want to say but I feel like I can't say are available on the uncut versions, okay, which you, if you've not seen them, I've got a, a list of titles which are in the community of my channel. Okay, but but videos like that, I I, I do have to be censored with uh, what I what I put up on YouTube. So um, I, there is one thing that I said, and I I, I really should. I really should say this, uh, that one of my readings here about this, the surrogate, I said that she was an earthy type person. Um, she was like a pagan type. And I said this a while back, that she's like a pagan type, earthy type person, brown hair. Um, now, I don't know which uh, video that was. I would bring it up here, but it's one of the videos that I did when I was explaining about, it may have been, um, it may have been the surrogate, handing over the baby, the surrogate, and that, that, I, that I did on the uncut readings. Um, I think it may have been that one, but uh, I explained that she was an earthy type, uh, she was a pagan type with brown hair. Um, yes, I did. And she was into vegan and, and all of that. Um, and then when I saw that lady standing outside uh, Westminster Cathedral, I thought, okay, she looks like a pagan type. She looks like an earthy type. And she actually looks like she would be a vegan um into all this chanting kind of thing so i have done a reading on that guys it's very interesting and i will put that 
onto um, if anybody wants any uncut readings on the surrogate of what I've said before, um, I have got some available if you've not seen them, okay. Okay, okay, what um, Susan has written before you decide to block. She's definitely not um, an, uh, not an, an um, um, fan. Okay, I can't see a Susan on here. I don't know, I, I've, I've had to look and I can't see a Susan. Yeah, so, yeah, so, um, yeah. So it's really strange that I predicted that she's a pagan type and that she was earthy and that that lady that was stood outside um the, the the cathedral there was actually wearing like a pagan dress and and all all that really okay um i'll have a look i uh, okay who is susan barber i don't know Okay, Wally Simpson is part of the British history as being responsible for the demise of the man destined to be King of England. Okay, well, I don't see that as offensive. I don't know why she's been offensive. Uh, okay. Okay, guys, it seems like, um, I'm not being rude here, but I don't see um, as that as offensive because that's a valid point there. So if, please, Please don't, uh, you know, please get on with each other uh, on here, okay? Um, we've all got our differences, okay? Um, so I don't see anything that, yeah, so let's continue. It sounds a bit petty to me and she's put, she has put a valid comment there, so I, I'm not going to block somebody for that. Um, okay, so... Yeah, so yeah, she does. Did anybody did anybody see those uh uncut videos that I did about handing over the baby and uh, where is the or have I did I put that up on YouTube? Where is the surrogate? Where is the surrogate? That's right, yeah. Where is the surrogate? Did anybody see that? Because um Did anybody see that? Um, yeah, well, you, you watch my video when I finished here, okay. Uh, so if anybody saw that, I did, I, I actually did describe that lady that stood outside uh, Westminster Abbey, um, earthy type, vegan, uh, pagan type, okay. Okay, so yeah, but I did. I said, uh, "Where is the, where is the surrogate? This one and this, there's all this as well. Uncut ones that I've got uh, that actually did, uh, did, did actually say that." Yeah, I think I, I feel what I feel there that she was invited, but not inside. It may not be her religion if she's a pagan. She won't be going inside of that church. It's not her religion. Yeah, she did. She did look a Wiccan type. Yeah. If you want the uncut readings about the surrogates that I did, uh, the big fat baby, a big huge baby, there's handing over the baby from the surrogate. Um, I think there's one on YouTube that I put up of uh, where is the surrogate, um, uh, but there's there's two others that are linked to that. Um, it's it's unfortunate that I can't put those on YouTube. It's just that they're so sensitive, but they are on offer if you want on cut readings. Um, if you go to my community page for my followers, um, it's there's a list. I've put a list there on the community page. Uh, there, okay. Um, 
yeah so go and have a look at that there's i think there's about 14 now isn't there of the uncut readings uh, they're all for my followers for you to look in deeper there okay um my oh i'm sorry penny to hear that no you know what they i i i, I kind of asked for a donation of like five dollars that's all so as I can because I have each individual one I have to send it to you and that's all that's for is is the time it takes for me to get it out of my system and then you know upload it onto you you your system so I just that it's just for that five dollars is like what what uh, what you would pay for a coffee really um just for the for my time um to do that so that's all I asked for is a small donation for these uh, un uncut videos. Excuse me. So I hope you've enjoyed uh, the show today, guys. Um, we had quite a discussion. And straight after this, okay, straight after this, don't forget, um, uh, I am going to upload that uh, video of that lady outside of Westminster Abbey, um, that pagan woman, okay, uh, that I described ages ago um so uh yeah yeah it's quite interesting so please have a look at that it's free okay you don't have to pay for that one and i have gone a little bit further than what i'd normally do on that one too so go and have a look at that guys and um yeah i'm going to try and get more uh, up on 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 here too i'm going to look at one intuitive reading which i'm quite interested in is that the queen is not happy with uh harry uh and is harry going to leave the royal family um and and i am going to look at that too okay uh that will they that those ones will be on youtube but there will be lengthy ones as well so uh, i hope you've enjoyed the show today I, i've enjoyed it it's been a nice chat and um hope you've enjoyed your cup of tea and um the next uh show will be on sunday sunday evening show okay and what i'm going to do with the format i'm just going to be free flow with it like today just having a chat about this that and the other and um and you know you you also chat with each other and in between i will put some readings up okay so um so i don't know what the late show is going to be about it's all going to be fresh uh when you arrive we'll talk i'm sure we'll talk about the royal family as usual and um you know and anything new that's happening and looking in between the lines of of uh what's uh what's going on in the tabloids and the newspapers so i will see you on sunday but i'm going to have lots of things uploaded too for you guys if you're waiting for uncut readings uh it get it takes about five days okay um give it five days <laughs> from when you paid because I have people also other people waiting for personal readings and also waiting for uncut readings too and i have to say guys although i love i really love your emails i really do love your emails if i don't answer your emails if i don't have a chance to answer your emails your private emails don't be worried about it okay it's just that i i'm so busy and uh, I do try to answer, but don't forget, I'm also answering all of my comments as well, all of your comments on, on each video. And I'm also doing this as well. So if I don't answer your personal emails, uh, please don't be offended. Um, I just I just don't have time. And, um, and that's just basically it, okay. So sending you guys lots of love, lots of blessings. I will see you on Sunday. I'm looking forward to that. It's a late show on Sunday. Okay. And bye for now, guys. Have a great weekend. And I will see you then. I can't wait to see you again. Okay. Love all of you. Okay. And bye for now. Bye-bye. I always get stuck at this point. <laughs> this is where I'm not professional. Okay. Oh. No, I got stuck again. Okay. 
Oh, now I've got stuck again. 